One of the easiest ways to speed up your renders is to optimize your render settings. And it's important to keep in mind that sometimes a scene doesn't need the same render settings throughout the entire scene. For instance, the warm winter titles that Handel Eugene created really just have lights dancing along a reflective surface for the first 90 frames or so, and then jump into a section with some depth of field at the end. Well, the first part of this render really doesn't need very high settings. The second one does because of that depth effect. What I've done here is set up two different render settings and batch them using the take system. So you can see that these early frames are able to be rendered in 15 seconds or so, while the frames where the depth effect starts to come into play are rendering it more like two or three minutes. If I rendered this entire scene at two or three minutes, it would take quite a bit longer to render. So I'm going to show you how you can set this up with child render settings and the take system. The first thing that we want to do is go into the render settings using the clapboard with the gear icon here and set up an extra render setting. You can see that right now it's set up for the high render setting that's going to render everything super high quality. Uh, what I want to do is go ahead and create a new child render setting. And for this child render setting, I'm going to go much lower with this. I'm going to set this something like 2, 2, 5, and 10. And then on the shadow subdivision, ambient occlusion, and subsurface, we don't need any extra subdivision there. And I'm going to call this my low render setting. Now what we need to do is go into the output and set the appropriate frame range. So that depth effect starts at frame 90. So I'm going to render from 0 to 89 with this render setting. And then with the main high quality render setting, we're going to start with 90 and render to 150. Now because we set this up as a child render setting, any changes that we make here to the output resolution or the save path will actually propagate down to the lower render setting. So for instance, here on the save path, I'm going to just set this to a relative path within the renders folder and then use the PRJ token to input the project file name. And we'll do that with the multipass image as well. And because the low setting is a child render setting, you can see that it inherits those file paths automatically. Only the sections that we specifically changed, the sampling quality and the output frame range, are going to be different between these two render settings. Now we need to batch up the render so that both frame ranges render all in one pass, so I don't have to babysit this. The render queue is often our first thought when it comes to batch rendering, but it tends to force you into having a separate output path name for every single render queue item. In this case, I want to render a contiguous frame range so that I can import this directly into After Effects as a single sequence. So I'm going to use the take system instead. So we'll just create two new takes. On the first take, I'm just going to choose the low setting. And then on the second take, I'm going to choose my render setting. The frame range is already set in the render setting, so all I need to do is check the takes that I need to render and go up here and choose Render Mark Takes to Picture Viewer. It's going to warn me that the file names are in conflict, but we're not going to worry about that because we know that the frame ranges are set up such that they won't actually overwrite each other. And that's all there is to it. This is going to render out and I'm going to have my complete animation much quicker than I would if I rendered the entire thing at high quality. So the next time you're rendering your project, think about how you can split up the various portions of the animation and optimize the render speed for each one using child render settings and the take system. If you enjoyed this quick tip, please like, share, and visit Cineversity.com for more great Cinema 4D tutorials and resources.